actually, it was not encouraged. I was a girl. I was the youngest of Eastern European parents who believed that education was wasted on females. That I would just get married, have children, be a housewife, and that's what they hoped for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, well, I had other aspirations. And I was strong enough to see what I did not want to be. And I just worked from the time I think I was 10 years old, I always worked either at babysitting or when I was old enough to get a real job. I worked after school, I worked weekends, and I put myself through college because that's what I wanted. And my parents weren't going to pay for it. So when we were poor. We didn't have a lot of money anyhow. Um, so I put myself through school. I could only afford two years. But I got a degree in laboratory science in two years and ended up working for the pioneers in fetal surgery. We were the first people to operate on the unborn. My dad, who was born in 1904, Koretz, Poland, had a father who was an absolute evil tyrant. Horrible. I, I got to know him. I could not exaggerate his meanness. It was terrible. So when my dad was 12 years old, his sweet mother died. And she was just a wonderful person. And his father said, I'm going to go to America and I will send for you boys. My father was 12. His brother was nine. And in the meantime, you're going to be living at a certain place. Well, the place was a brothel. And he, mm -hmm. at 12 years old and nine years old, my father and his nine-year-old brother went to live in the care of a brothel. You know, I grew up in an area where everybody was the same. So we didn't know, you know, we didn't know we were poor. We just knew that we, if we wanted a good time, we had to create it. And the people in my neighborhood grew up to either be hardened criminals or very, very successful. It was, there was nothing in the middle. It was either in prison <laughs> or successful. Yeah. Yeah. I will, I will say that, um, fortunately, no one in my family became a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> although, although I have been, I have been accused of being a terrorist a couple of times. What? Yes. Why? Um, well, I, I had to go pick up a cocktail table off an airplane once and it was coming in on a plane at the airport in the cargo area. And I had no idea where the cargo area was. So I finally get to the cargo area. The plane comes in, the table is not on the plane. And the man says to me, it's coming on the next plane at 730. So I said, okay, I, I'll go over to, <laughs> I'll go over to the terminal and have dinner and come back. And as I'm leaving the cargo area, there's a whole motorcade going by of limousines and secret service and the American flag. And I said, well, I don't know where I am. I don't know how to get out of here. I'll just follow them. <laughs> so now I'm in a van with tinted windows and suddenly they all stop. And I'm at the end of a private runway. Air Force Two is on the runway and I'm surrounded by secret service and state troopers. Yeah. Wow. Danger just seems to follow me. <laughs> oh dear, that's amusing.